Hi everybody, this is Dan the Man back with you for um, our Raspberry Pi look part two. I was gonna go into the LXDE, the uh, Linux, you know, desktop environment, but I was like, it's not really that glamorous. There's not really much to show on it besides a few things. So I'm gonna go right into it and show you Area 51 on the PlayStation One. It really, really runs superior it runs absolutely fantastic but I also apologize for the screen being cut off like that uh, I need to really rethink my whole camera situation but anyway in the meantime uh, area 51 it came out I believe in 94 95 um, it came out on Windows 95 it came out for uh, the uh, PlayStation 1 I believe I believe, and I could be wrong about this, I believe it came in on the Saturn as well. Pretty sure I played it on that. Oh, also, it was available in the arcades, of course, too. It's a, a full motion video game where you're obviously on a rail, so it's considered a rail shooter. Um, you're following uh, some kind of outbreak at Area 51, hence the name, and you're part of a secret organization called Star. It, basically, Resident Evil style FMV shooter. I think there's a zombie outbreak or something too. That's why you're shooting all ex-workers and, and whatnot. Um, it's a real fun game. It's absolutely fantastic. But my, my the majority of my point through all this is to just show you that the Raspberry Pi can handle full motion video PlayStation 1 games. Which, not really that fantastic if you really think about it. Uh, it really doesn't handle 3D that well, which I'll go into in other videos. Um... My current system settings right now are set to medium, which I believe is no over voltage, um, I believe 900 megahertz. Uh, so it's not really pushing the system as, as much as it could, but I, I really don't feel like blowing one of these up yet. So um, to make a long story short, it runs great, but it depends on the game. Also what I found out with file formats. It, it runs uh, .bin files, you know, bin ISO. It doesn't like, um, oh goodness, what's the name of that file format? It doesn't like, I, I believe, MDF file. So you might have to convert some of them. I could be wrong about some of these, but I'm pretty sure it, it just doesn't like that format. I'll have to look into some of the details with the emulator later, but I didn't really want to, I, I didn't really make this uh, Raspberry Pi setup for PlayStation. It was just merely to show uh, some of the features and everything that you could run it. Um, some of the other games you most likely will be able to run uh, 2D games such as Alundra. I know I have that on here too. Um, Wheel of Fortune 2nd Edition did not really run to any kind of potential. It was rather disappointing actually. So, uh, let's go into another game right now, too. Let me check my list here. Hmm, what to run? Ooh! Ooh, I know a great game to run, guys. Um, probably heard of it. It's called Castlevania 3. I don't know. You might not have heard of it. It's It was kind of a kind of an unknown game. <laughs> Just kidding. It's literally one of the best uh, uh, Nintendo games of all time, in my opinion, of course. It's, uh, it's a little known fact, too, that this game for some odd reason, the US release, it had a little bit of downturn graphics. Um, they they kind of like neutered, if that's the right term for it, the cross. Uh, the US version for some reason has a name entry screen, which is literally ridiculous. There's no point in putting your name in. Uh, I believe the uh, Japanese version had a slightly better sound chip in it too, so the sound was a little bit sharper. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, other than that though, it went back to the roots of the original Castlevania game, which was just, you know, a 2D side-scroller, um, linear. You know, it's, it, there's a couple of choices where you choose a different character, and you choose levels, but overall it's, it's, it's a little bit more akin to the first game for uh, Nintendo. The second game, of course, Simon's Quest, where you ran around and saw all misspelled text which was always rather interesting. All right, here we are at the boss now. Checking bricks for meat, of course. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. Oh, 
such a hard battle. Come on. Yes. Yes. I killed you. Pick up the glowing orb. Boom. Alright guys, so the next game I want to show you, just to show, you know, a couple differences, because I showed Genesis and Sega Master System in the last one. Arcade, no. Game Boy. Okay. Yeah, let's go with the Game Boy game. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> I probably shouldn't run this, because I know I'm going to get killed 15 times, but I'll do it. Do you guys remember a game called Mega Man? Well, guess what? The Game Boy 1 is just as difficult as the original Nintendo one. Oh god, I don't even know why I had this game. I, I wasn't the biggest Mega Man fan. I never had any of the Nintendo games. But, uh, somehow I ended up with this, I believe for my, my 11th birthday. And let me tell you something, guys. I still suck at this game. I, I don't even remember if I ever beat it all the way. I, I just remember being very frustrated with it. Um... Very, very challenging, but you know, it, it, it you know, the more challenging the game, the better uh, makes you a gamer. Especially if you keep at it and be persistent, which I didn't. <laughs> but anyway, so this is just showing off the Game Boy. Uh, it's very unspectacular. There's not really much to say about it. Game Boy is so old. Um, the hardware itself, I think at the time too, was nothing fancy. It was just fancier because it was in a portable package instead. But. Here's me, here's me getting my ass kicked. Didn't even make it to cut, man. Oh, okay, nope. Yep, and I'm dead. Fantastic. So, um, okay. So, coming out of Mega Man, I know a great game that pretty much everybody had. I know one of my personal friends had it, Mortal Kombat for Game Boy. Now, for those of you thinking, oh wow, they made a Mortal Kombat for Game Boy. So what? You can make Halo for Game Boy. It, it doesn't mean it's going to be a good game. <laughs> you know, there's a couple of factors. Graphics, gameplay, you know, time and knowledge invested in it. You know, can it handle it? Kang. Scorpion versus Kang. Oh my god. The controls are terrible. Oh my god. And you see the moon in the background, guys? Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I feel like I'm on the moon. Because if you look, when you jump and everything, it's incredibly delayed. The kicking, the punching, very inaccurate. Ooh, come over here. Boom. So it's very, very, very delayed. Um, if you play the Sega Master System one or the Game Gear one, they're pretty much identical to each other except for screen resolution. It's a better version of this one, really. And I know I know, I face criticism personally for that, but I gotta be honest with you. The Game Gear and the Sega Master System beat the hell out of the Game Boy. And if there was a Nintendo one, besides the pirate copies. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, but anyway, what are we talking about here? This was supposed to be about the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this game sucks, but anyway. The Raspberry Pi can handle... A multitude of different game systems however one thing that it does not do very well is handle just the gameplay aspect of it like controller wise and then that, that, that's a personal thing it depends on what controller setup you have and everything right now I'm using a Logitech PS3 uh, wireless controller so it's my own fault I'm not I don't mean to blame Raspberry Pi retro Pi's team or whatever it, it's really just my own fault for not having it you know, a better setup myself. I think it'd be better if I had a hardwired connection to it. I do have another USB Logitech PC controller that's, you know, obviously shaped like a PlayStation controller, which is fantastic. But anyway, let's go into another game right now, too. Let's see what we got. Hmm, what to play, what to play. Oh, oh, I know a good game. Yes. All right. Welcome to the Smurfs. Dun, dun, dun. This game is a reflection of my childhood. I jumped over fences. I jumped around like a moron. I jumped over small rivers. I dodged stairs. 
jumped upstairs all the time. Then I jumped down the stairs and I dodged spiders. That scared the hell out of me as a kid. Just saying. Then I jumped over more rivers. Like a moron. And then I jumped off a chair onto a table to save my girlfriend. Smart that. Yes, folks, that's the entire game. And yes, it does get harder. There's more crap that appears in the screen. Uh, Atari's really a bad example compared to modern day games. I mean, this is more akin to, like, cell phone games. Which, I gotta tell you, this is probably better than most cell phone games out there. It's totally killing the handheld market with pure shit. And I suck! And I died. Over and over again. Let's see if we there's another game on here. Oh my god. I actually had this game on Atari. Also. Snake. What the hell is going on in this game? You're a dot in the center of the screen. You shoot all around you. 360 degrees. Little baby space bars. And then some creature that's for some reason flying through, which I believe is the snake. And this is the game. That That's it. That That's the entire game. I don't know how my parents, how much my parents paid for this game, but I'm I'm hoping that somebody just handed it to them for free and said just take it, because this is what people used to do back then: just visualize and try to conceptualize what the hell it's supposed to be. The playing field makes no sense. The snake makes no sense. It doesn't really follow a very precise pattern, I, unless you guys can figure it out more so than I can. But this was my childhood. And that's all the patience I have for that. So go out and buy a Raspberry Pi. They're fantastic. In my next video, I think I'm going to go into more details about uh, the setups and everything. So most likely it'll be more so like static screens and everything, but just trying to lay people out through the whole policies, procedures, everything like that. Um, I'm still learning Linux commands too, so I really can't do a good video on that. Or do any good video for that matter. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of problems with little things like uh, DOSBox. It runs fine in the LXD environment from the uh, shortcut, but then when I try to try to open it in terminal, my keyboard doesn't even function. So if anybody knows any details about that, please post below. Um, also, if you like this video, just give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs up anyway. Um, I don't get that many thumbs up, so, you know, everyone gets a thumbs down, so. Thank you, I appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a great day, and please, if you haven't bought one yet, go out and buy Raspberry Pi.